What is up everybody? This is Michael Filesage checking in here and today I wanted to talk to you guys about something that is often overlooked in the whole cultivation world and I don't know why because it's super easy. It doesn't get any easier than this and basically I'm talking about truffles or sclerotia technically, right? But I call them stones or truffles uh, just because they're easier. So in this jar over here, I inoculated this on the 27th of October and you could already see it's already starting to form little truffles and these will get bigger and bigger as time goes on. There's some on the bottom here. Look at that. See that guys? So these guys will get bigger and bigger. And what you do is you leave them for around two months minimum. You could go up to like a year and a half, no problem. In fact, the taste will become more and more rich and flavorful the longer you leave them. But two months is the minimum I would do because after a certain point, they don't really get bigger. They just start to taste stronger and stronger. And over here, so I got three different jars producing sclerotia. And over here, it's one of the jars that I, I spawned. So two of these are different genetics. One of them I spawned to here and they could also produce fruits. So that's the awesome thing about this guys and the thing is as they're producing fruits they will also be producing sclerotia in here and once you spawn it's a bulk you will actually get bigger sclerotia better sclerotia yields so that's also something to consider but if you don't have space what most people do is just leave them in a jar put them in a closet or a cupboard somewhere somewhere and just forget about it because it's that easy guys now of course obviously i recommend you use agar to inoculate these guys because you are going to be leaving the jars for a while you don't want there to be any hidden contaminants so you want to make sure that your culture is clean but you can certainly do it with a spore syringe but if you will do it with a spore syringe then i highly highly recommend you go the brf route so just make a brf cake aka a pf cake i'll be making a video on that and inoculate it as usual and just leave it aside that's it basic simple stuff guys so you know this is completely beginner proof in fact it's more beginner proof than poor lovers so i don't know why more people aren't doing it so this is what i wanted to show you guys okay so now you got the main meat of the info maybe you didn't know about it now you learned about it you could stop the video here from this point on i'm going to talk about the specifics of it why it produces sclerotia why it fruits how do you tell if if one culture is better at making truffles than another so basically these guys have the potential for both now obviously there's a genetic component to it some of them will be better truffle producers just by virtue of genetics okay some of them will be better at producing fruits some of them perhaps will be far less likely to produce truffles maybe they barely produce any truffles but they produce a ton of fruits whereas others may just produce mostly stones and barely any fruits but you know those cultures generally are quite rare i find generally they're they're a good balance of both at least with these uh grass lovers that i have here and i think the reason for that is because they need both to survive right because the environments that they come from they are natural disasters there are floods a lot of times there's a lot of fire because mostly grass loving species tend to produce sclerotia like for example dung lovers don't produce sclerotia at all but grass lovers do and so you know they need both to survive why because sclerotia to survive the natural disaster and they also need to fruit so they could spread the spores so they could continue their lineage right so it spreads all around and then finds a new place that's why generally if you just find some random spores most of the time it's both but some people for example just want to produce only truffles some people want to produce only fruits right and in my opinion if you can produce the fruits they are superior in my opinion than the truffles so if you do have the space, then I would totally fruit them. And you have the knowledge to fruit them, you could totally fruit them. They're not that difficult. They just need a lot of FAE and a lot of moisture. But they can be fine without the FAE. You just need to then put a lot of moisture. They will need a casing layer generally, although they can fruit without it, but it's more rare. The thing is, if you don't have FAE though, they will become like spaghetti-like. So that's why for these guys, usually if you wanna if you want them to really thrive you don't use a tub setup like with core lovers all right now moving on basically both of these genetics this guy is actually from a clone this guy is from a clone this guy is from a clone from a good cluster of fruits so that's why i'm fruiting these guys asap these guys here are not from clones they're from agar from back in june and these guys basically i'm trying to produce a good truffle producer so uh, these guys are producing quite a bit of truffles in a little over two weeks that's very very good timing and they are there are a lot of them you know so that's very good. But you know, if you go to places where they grow these guys commercially, if you clone one of their truffles, you can, in two weeks, this will be just full of big stones. It's insane. And they've been working on these genetics for decades, right? So that's why. So if you're into genetic stuff, you can keep going could keep trying to find some good truffle genetics have a lot of fun with that knock yourself out next thing i want to talk about is agar right is there any way that you can tell that you're going to have a good truffle producer through agar because some people say that if your mycelium on the agar is more yellowish like this guy see that this is 1d these guys are 1d right here 
these two guys that are producing truffles are 1D. So with yellow mycelium, people say that it's more likely to produce truffles. But you know, I, I really don't know. Like it's not really substantiated too much because for example, this guy is a direct clone from a good truffle. Now given there's a little yellow there, but it's mostly white, right? So I don't think it's obviously, you know, so here's the difficult thing. We don't know where exactly genetics ends and where exactly environmental conditions come into play. Uh, obviously truffles will prove, well, not obviously, I guess you guys wouldn't know, but drier conditions do favor truffle production. So if you want to create truffles here, you would want to make your core a little drier and you wouldn't really want to miss it. And over time they will start popping up and the, and the core will start splitting because the truffles are getting bigger and bigger. And that's what you want, right? That's a good sign. They will also do that in cakes, you know, so environmental conditions play a role. But how much of a role does it play? That's the real question. So we don't really know. So, you know, people say, oh, you know, the color of the mycelium can be a telltale sign. But then there's also people that get great truffle producers from white mycelium. Also, this guy, I had, this is also an untested culture. And this, this transfer here, there was a big truffle there. So I, I made a transfer. I believe some of those dark spots may be little truffles. There's a big, big guy here. So I cloned it and put it to a plate that I can't find right now. I tried to look for it, but I couldn't find it. So I'll have to take another look. But uh, yeah, basically, you know, that's the quick rundown of it, of truffle producers. So just want to show you guys some more. 1D, again, it's these guys. And if you guys remember, in around two of my videos, I talked about double shaking, right? These guys are just single shaken. This guy is double shaken. So this guy, as you can see, the mycelium is a lot wispier. It's it's just started to produce truffles, I noticed today, like here, right? The little yellow thing there. But compared to these guys, which were inoculated at the same time, they're not producing as much. I'm sure it's because of the double shake rather than anything genetic. These guys just had longer to consolidate. So yeah, just inoculate your jars. If you want to make truffles inside your jars, put it in a closet or something and just wait two months and then harvest them and have them fresh. And for drying them, if you want to leave them for a while, here's what I recommend. Do not dehydrate them in the dehydrator just as they are. By the way, the fresh truffles will last for a couple of weeks in a fridge, so that's also very nice. You could also freeze them, and I've heard of stories of people taking 10-year-old truffles and just cloning the inside and getting growth. So, you know, again, these things, these little truffles are meant to be like health, health insurance for the whole organism, right? So that after the natural disaster is over, then they could restart and put out mycelium and start colonizing again, and hopefully it'll rain just the right amount they'll have the right amount of air and they can fruit and they can spread their spores so they can go sporulate all over the place back to the drying uh, to dry these guys you want to cut them up you want to slice them up a little by little don't worry you'll notice they will not change color so they're very stable they'll keep the flavor intact just slice them up put them in your dehydrator and just dry them out once you're done then put them in a jar you know obviously put a desiccant in there and you could make tea with it because they do become rock hard uh, a lot of times they can just pass through your digestive system so i like to make tea and really enjoy that flavor pour boiling water on it even for there for a while you know let them sit there for a while you could even boil them for a couple of minutes high boil and then drink them so that's what i recommend guys to really enjoy the fruits of your labor or the non-fruits of your labor. All right, guys, Michael File Sage, checking out.